hi everyone again with this series of lectures and this time we are going to speak about fundamentals of near infrared spectroscopy and associated chemometrics and we need to investigate how to make the data talk and to speak to us first of all from where shall we start first you need to have spectral data in your hand then you have to obtain some samples whether these samples is fruits or vegetables are solids or liquid then you introduce these samples inside the in the near infrared spectrometer and the data transfer directly to the computer and then you have a spectral data either you can use optical fiber optic to uh, sense the samples and then transfer the spectral data directly to the spectrometer or you can even use a liquid sample using for example cuvet and put it inside the spectrometer and then you have the data saved in your spectrometer in your computer under this condition you have spectral data and you can make some manipulation and make some analysis of the data to make classification identification discrimination and detection but if you need to make some prediction of some major components inside your samples you need to go to the lab you need to have first of all to know what is inside what happening inside your spectrometer so the samples either it is solid or liquid should be uh, illuminated by light source and this light source after interacted with the, with the samples go directly to the slit and this slit depends on the wavelength and then go to this dispersing elements or dispersing device either to be prism or prism grating prism and then disperse it to different wavelengths so all of this carry a lot of information is enough to make a discrimination and detection and the classification but if you need to make prediction of some chemical attributes like protein content water content sugar content carbohydrate content you need to go to the lab by yourself and then analyze your samples to figure out what is the real amount and the real values of your constituents of interest then in both data either for both data for spectral data and the chemical data goes together to the computer and then in this situation you can make a prediction so what is happening inside the computer there is something happens in, in, in the computer to make this kind of tasks either to make a discrimination or classification or prediction that's the journey we have to go through this presentation that's why this presentation is really useful for the people who is interested to learn near infrared spectroscopy or have just started their their journey in this field of research in these slides you can see we have different species and different kinds of fish and then if you need to make a discrimination first you need to have spectral data from these all of these kinds of fish but if you need to make a prediction you have the you have to obtain a chemical uh, composition of the fat content or protein content or water content inside your samples once you have this data you can make a prediction models and these prediction models can predict all of these constituents and all of these compounds in unknown samples in your future samples and even not even for this but can even build a prediction map or a chemical image so the theory of this uh, application depends on the, of the spectral technique depends on the interaction between the light and the biomaterials in this case is the food materials so the light go through your samples interrogate inside the, the components of the samples and then could be reflected or transmitted or completely absorbed inside the samples all of these samples either reflected or transmitted carry a lot of information that could be useful for making the discrimination and the classification of the food samples so this lights if you have the your light here for example number a is incident light this light could be reflected directly at the point of uh, 
of incidents, and this is called specular reflectance. And sometimes this is not useful enough to carry a useful information. But this light could be go through and the travel inside the component of the uh, and the tissues and the pores of your samples, and of course, depending on the size of your uh, of the uh, of your samples and the molecules inside the samples, uh, this light can go uh, either shorter or uh, or deeper inside the sample and then could be reflected again. Of course, this information is called diffuse reflectance. So we have two kinds of reflectance, diffuse reflectance and specular reflectance. Diffuse reflectance carry a lot of information more than specular reflectance that could be not useful. The incident light could be completely absorbed, absorbed by the composition and the components of your samples or could be either go through your sample at completely transmitted source samples or be scattered and be reflected from your samples. This is the six features of how the light could be interacted with the samples. But in general, the information useful for our analysis is the reflectance, absorbance, and transmittance. We can e even make a conversion between all of these uh, sources of the information. For example, if you need to express the transmission, we can use the uh, amount of uh, transmitted data of, over the amount of incident light. And the uh, reflectance, if you need the reflectance, you need to calculate the amount of reflected light over the amount of uh, incident light. All of these data, transmission or reflectance, could be easily converted to absorbance using this bear lambert law. Because in bear lambert law, is a cornerstone of, a, of making a prediction of the concentration of all of your chemical composition and of all your chemical compounds inside your samples because there, are, there is a linear relationship between the concentration and the absorbance. This is a, uh, the light, uh, the width of your cuvette of your, of your sample, and this is absorption coefficient. If this both factors are constants, that means there is a linear relationship between absorbance and the concentration. So how we can get information spectral data? And actually, it depends of what kind of information we need from the samples. For example, we need only the reflectance from these samples. That means we need to put the light and the detector in the same site because the incident light could be reflected directly to the detector. Or if you are interested about transmission because you need the light to go through your samples to carry much deeper information from the sample, okay, then you need to put the light and detector in the opposite side. Sometimes if you need to get rid of all of your spectral or uh, specular reflectance, that means you need to put a barrier just about the light and detector in the same side and the a barrier to prevent the direct specular reflectance it could do directly to the detector. This is a different mode of acquisition of spectral data. So which spectral lesion we are interested to get information from electromagnetic spectrum? Electromagnetic spectrum extended from gamma ray to long radio uh, wave array. That means which region is more useful for all food samples, all of agricultural products, Actually, there, is, uh, there are two kinds of regions. The region that is visible to our eyes, extended from 380 nanometer to 740 nanometer. And there is also near-infrared near infrared region. And this is extended from 740 to 14,000 nanometer. But we are even concentrated in a shorter uh, wavelength is extended from 740 nanometer to only 2500 nanometer. This is called near infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So the information we can get from the samples could be only color using the color meter, but this information is only very limited because it is only for point and also it is narrow 
because it is only concentrated in the from 380 to 740 and it is also very limited to only three channels rgb or xyz or lab is all of these are even parameters for uh, characterization of the color but if you are interested to to obtain spatial data this spatial data carry a lot of uh, dimensional information morphological information like color like shape like dimensions that means you need to take a color image for all of your samples that means you have a spatial information but you don't have a spectral information because we are still in the very limited narrow spectral range from 380 to 740. if you are interested about the spectral data you need to use a spectral information you need to use a spectrometer and then we don't have a spatial information we have only spectral data could be extended from 400 to 700 400 to 1000 400 to 17000 or 400 to 2500 uh, or 2500 nanometer a lot of information we can obtain from a spectros from a spectral data or a spectral information but if you are interested to carry a both information about the spatial information or spectral information, you need to go for a spectral imaging. That's why if you need to, to know where, that means you are, you are interested about the spatial information. But if you are interested about what inside the sample and how much is it, what is the amount, okay? So you are interested about, or about using the spectrometer or uh, near infrared spectroscopy. But if you are interested to answer the questions where, what, and how much you need to use spectral imaging system. So we need to know in, in all kinds of food, either it is solid or liquid, whether it is fresh, fresh products or processed products, we need to know what we are going to measure. We are going to measure different components, different constituents, all of these constituents could be water, carbohydrates, sugars, starch, fiber, protein, fat, even pigments like uh, chlorophyll, melanin, anthocyanin. All of these uh, components you need to identify even before carrying out your experiments. Because the spectral information you obtain from the, your spectrometer, either from sp uh, spectroscopy or spectral imaging, is much related to the molecular bond of this uh, composition of interest. For example, if you look to this uh, chart or the spectral uh, chart of uh, uh, presented in the screen right now, that is related between the relationship between wavelength and the absorbance. So you can find different absorption band of water at 440 and 1920 nanometer because this is much related to absorption of water. If you if you look to the right hand side scale axis in in your high right hand side, this is absorption coefficient, and the absorption coefficient of water has two peaks at these particular peaks at these particular points at 440 and 1920. This is absorption bands of water. That's why in my sample I can find these two kinds of absorption bands. If you are interested about uh, fat content you need to go CH bond. CH bond is related to the fat content because CH2 is the main components or the main uh, compounds inside the, the fat. That's why you can find uh, a chemical uh, absorption at 1200, 715, and 2300 nanometer. This is absorption band of fat. In general, if you are interested to use near infrared spectroscopy for analyzing your data you need to know you have only focus in four bonds ch nh oh and sh oh for example is related to water ch is related to fat or ch2 or ch only or ch3 and nh is related to protein because it is related to amine if you analyze all of your samples and if you are not lucky enough you can have all of these spectral data that related bit, relate the make a relationship between wavelength 
and the absorbance. Of course, you cannot analyze all of this spectral information as it is. So you need some tools to make some manipulation of, your, of all of this data. But if you are lucky enough, you can find the absorption band at 1440, and then you can use some important wavelengths that you can use for analyzing the data. This is the general information, the general spectral data that you probably obtain from your samples. The relationship between the samples and the, all of these is wavelengths. In column wise is the variables, is the wavelengths, and row wise is your is your sample from one to twenty or one thousands, whatever the number of the samples. This information is all is called X information. And this is enough for making detection and discrimination and the classification. And but if you are interested about prediction, you need the reference value of the main composition: protein, pigments, water, carbohydrate, sugars, whatever. So you can even show every single row or every single sample as a spectrum like this, or you can even make a prediction between every single wavelength and the related. Uh, chemical composition but if you are good enough you can use multi linear regression by using a multi variables for prediction in general what kind of analysis you have to use you need to think about this because it depends what is your task discrimination classification or prediction so you need to go this journey to convert your data from this table the ridiculous table to useful table and then to convert your data using the modeling and chemometrics analysis or multivariate analysis to obtain these kinds of features or to these kinds of images that can make a, a visualization of your data in a form of chemical images that make a, a visualization of different chemical compositions inside your samples. So the questions are, do we need a tool for performing all of this analysis? Yes, of course, we need the tool. This tool is called the chemometrics. From the name, chemometrics is chemical and the informatics. So we need to use information system in the chemical data. In this chemical data, we use this our all of our knowledge in programming, in data analysis, to use the, all of this information to obtain and digging this information to obtain some models. This model is good enough, should be robust enough to make a prediction or classification or prediction. And this is what we shall see in the, our, presenting, our presenting slides. See you.